This video is about optimization. That's where you try to achieve the best possible outcome given a certain set of circumstances. In this case, we are trying to find the minimum distance between two points. Which points on the graph of y equals 4 minus x squared are closest to the point 0 comma 2? When you solve an optimization problem, you will usually write a primary equation and a secondary equation. The primary equation is going to represent the quantity that you are trying to optimize, and the secondary equation will reflect some other constraint that you are limited by. In this case, we are trying to minimize the distance between these two points. So our primary equation will be a distance equation. And we're just going to use the distance formula to create this equation. So it's the square root of x minus x squared plus y minus y squared. So in this case, that's going to make x minus 0 squared plus y minus 2 squared. So there's the primary equation, and we can simplify this. The secondary equation is the equation of the parabola itself, y equals 4 minus x squared. So that is the secondary equation. Notice how the primary equation has two variables. We need to write this in terms of a single variable, and our strategy will be to use the secondary equation and do a substitution to get one variable. Luckily, we already have the secondary equation as y equals 4 minus x squared. The y is already by itself, so we can quickly make this substitution. So we will have d equals the square root of x squared plus, now here comes the y, and I'm going to go ahead and switch over to blue just to make it really clear that we are substituting for y right now. And uh, we still have the minus 2, and it's squared. So, of course, we will simplify this down. So that's going to be x squared. And then uh, 4 minus 2 is 2. So we have 2 minus x squared squared. But that would be the same thing as x squared plus 2 minus x squared times 2 minus x squared which if you multiply that out gives you 4 minus 4x squared plus x to the fourth power and combining like terms you end up with the square root of x to the fourth power minus 3x squared plus 4. Remember this is the equation for the distance between those two points. We want to find the smallest distance possible. We know how to find the extrema of a function you use the first derivative test to determine where the function is decreasing and increasing, and you use that information to find the local minimum. Let's make our calculations a lot easier by doing a little shortcut right now. This overall expression for distance will be the smallest when the expression under the radical is the smallest. So why don't we just minimize the expression under the radical, x to the fourth power minus 3x squared plus 4. If we find the value of x that makes this the smallest, it will automatically make the overall distance the smallest. But without the square root, our calculations will be so much easier. So we were going to do the first derivative test. So let's go ahead and do that now. The first derivative will be 4x to the third power, doing the power rule, so that'll be uh, minus 6x, and that's it. This is the first derivative. Now we need to find the critical numbers by setting the derivative equal to zero. Normally we would also check to see where the derivative is undefined, but um, there are no places where a polynomial is undefined. So we'll just do this, 4x to the third power minus 6x is equal to 0. There is a common factor here. Let's pull out 2x. That's going to leave inside 2x squared 
minus 3 is equal to 0. Using the zero product property, we have 2x equals 0, and 2x squared minus 3 is equal to 0. Dividing both sides by 2, we have x is equal to 0. So that's one critical number. Um, adding 3 to both sides, we have 2x squared is equal to 3. Dividing both sides by 2 gives us x equals 3 over 2. And taking the square root of both sides, we have x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2. So altogether, we have three critical numbers. Let's put these on the number line. So these critical numbers separate the number line into four intervals, and we will have to do a test value in each interval. Keep in mind that the square root of 3 over 2 is approximately 1.2. So let's do a test value in this interval. Um, let's go ahead and do negative 2. And we'll do a test value here, which can just be negative 1. And we'll do a test value right here, which will be positive 1. And we'll do a test value over here, which will be positive 2. Boom! I went ahead and switched this to factored form to make it easier to evaluate. So we will have 2 times negative 2. And then 2 times negative 2 squared minus 3. Out in front, we have a negative value for sure. And then on the inside here, maybe I'll put a little bracket to show where I'm at. Uh, well, this negative 2 squared uh, is positive 4 times 2 is 8. Minus 3 is a positive number. So overall, we are looking at a negative value. That tells us that the function will be decreasing in this interval. Okay, how about negative 1? So that's going to be 2 times negative 1, and then 2 times negative 1 squared minus 3. Out in the front, we have a negative value. And then on the inside, that's going to be a positive 1, so that's just 2 minus 3, which is a negative number, which gives us an overall uh, positive value. This tells us that the function is increasing in this interval. Moving on to positive 1. So we will have 2 times 1, and then 2 times 1 squared minus 3. So out in front there, we have a positive. And then uh, this is going to be 2 times 1 minus 3 again. So that's going to be a negative. And overall, we get a negative value. That tells us that in this interval, the function is decreasing. And finally, the 2. So we're going to have 2 times 2, and then 2 times 2 squared minus 3. So out in the front, we have a positive value. And then inside here, we have 2 times 4, which is 8 minus 3. All we care about is that's a positive. So the overall value is definitely going to be positive, which tells us that the function is increasing in this interval. Because of the patterns of decreasing and increasing, we can tell that the values of negative radical 3 over 2 and positive radical 3 over 2 will cause the distance to be at a minimum. Remember, we are trying to find the coordinates of the point closest to 0 comma 2. We have half of that answer so far we have the x values. Let's use the secondary equation to find the y values. So let's let x equal the square root of 3 over 2 and see what y turns out to be. So we have 
4 minus, and uh, we'll go ahead and put the square root of 3 over 2 in there. When you square a radical, the radical goes away. So we're going to have y equals 4 minus 3 over 2. Well, 4 is the same thing as 8 halves. So now we have like terms. So this is going to be 5 over 2. So that is the y value. And because of the symmetry of this problem, we know that the y value will be the same uh, for both positive radical 3 over 2 and negative radical 3 over 2. And that's it. These are the coordinates of the two points that are as close as you can get to 0, 2.